السلام عليكم ورحمة الله لعل الفريق ألف أو فريق النخبة من مسؤولي أوباما السابقين وكما كانت الحال مع أوباما الذي تلقى أسماء أعضاء وزارته المستقبلية بالكامل قبل شهر واحد من انتخابه من زميل أقدم في مجلس العلاقات الخارجية CFR فإن جميع أعضاء مجلس الوزراء المستقبليين الرئيسيين لبايدن تقريبا يشتركون في شيء واحد إنهم بالفعل أعضاء في مجلس العلاقات الخارجية عينه لعل الرسالة واضحة عودة إلى واشنطن أي مؤسسة السياسة الخارجية الطبيعية كما كانت وبحسب أحد المطلعين العودة إلى الخبرة وإلى العملية السياسية أي عودة أمريكا إلى مقعدها على رأس الطاولة كما يعبرون ولكن العالم اليوم ليس العالم الذي كان قبل أربع سنوات لم يعد بإمكان الرؤية الأمريكية الإدعاء بالعالمية الآن نظام عالمي مختلف بات يتكشف كيف سيكون رد فعل الفريق ألف؟ إذا ما ارتطمت سياساته بحائط الرفض في أوروبا أي فيما يتعلق بإيران أو في منطقتنا التي عانت أكثر من غيرها من الحصار والعقوبات والحروب الأخلاقية بين مزدوجين الأمريكية والأوروبية التي فرضت عليها للتفصيل أكثر في قراءة الوضع الأمريكي عقب الانتخابات الرئاسية وتبعاته على العالم والمنطقة يطيب لنا أن نستقبل من العاصمة الإيطالية روما السيد ألستر كروك الدبلوماسي البريطاني السابق وأحد الشخصيات البارزة في الاستخبارات البريطانية MI6 ولا سيما في أفغانستان وكذلك في دبلوماسية الاتحاد الأوروبي ومؤسس ومدير منتدى النزاعات Conflict Forum أهلا بكم إلى حلقة جديدة من الداخل معكم زينب صفار تابعونا Alistair Crook, former diplomat and a senior figure in European Union diplomacy, founder and director of Conflicts Forum. Welcome always to our show, Mina Dakhil, from the inside, Alistair. Thank you very much. Even at long distance, it's a pleasure. Sir, always welcome. Great to have you. Well, um, of course, Alistair, what happens in the U.S. is most people's primary focus now. It is still too early to say, but perhaps the U.S. election is the beginning of a new turning as you define it. Why do you believe it is the sense, uh, it is uh, like a, a sort of a fourth turning? What is meant by that? What is so significant about this U.S. election? This, um, this election, I think it's such an important turning because um, it is the end of the sort of era, the post-World War era, whereby, if you like, the United States spoke as a hegemon, as a single voice with a vision for the future, uh, which everyone was required to adhere to um, under pain of sanctions or military action. Now, this is a new era and we see China and we see Russia mm -hmm. realizing that actually there's no point, and this is the critical thing, there is no point any longer in looking for a dialogue with the United States, in looking for detente with the United States, because the last four years have proven to us all that the deep state in America will persist with its policies since the implosion of the Soviet Union, are against Russia, against China, and against Iran, mm -hmm. and they did it, and they would stop at nothing. I, they I, stop. I would appreciate Trump. here. Okay. Sure, they will stop at nothing. But I would appreciate here, Alistair, to ask you how will this fissure impact on the U.S. foreign policy? Will the former U.S. failed policies rinsed and repeated again evoke a reaction similar to that of the past? or one that is quite different? And how will Team Biden, Team A, or the A team, react if it finds its policies refused in the non-West 
or even in Europe uh, regarding Iran, for example? Well, I, I think the only conclusion, and it's the conclusion that I think you see in statements by President Putin and others who, who, who didn't mention hope or, or the expectation of anything better, it's going to be more vicious. American policy, the bitterness against Russia that has existed because of what happened to Mrs. Clinton, the false narrative of a, a stolen election of Mrs. Clinton is going, to, is going to be more vicious against China, against Russia. And what we've seen, all the key people coming into positions in the Biden team are precisely those of the old regime, the ancien regime. And yes, there is a very different reaction from mm -hmm. China, from Russia to this. They don't expect anything from America. They don't look for dialogue with America. They are not looking for negotiation. Of course, they'll talk politely as, you know, venerable states, but they're not looking that uh, America is interested in real diplomacy, mm -hmm. no diplomacy at all. So they have to defend themselves against economic siege, military sieges, mm -hmm. um, but no sense that there's any capability um, of the United States deep state mm -hmm. to do diplomacy. Right. That's a big change, big mm -hmm. change in, in the way in which it's viewed. And it's going to affect Europe too, yes. Sure. Now, uh, in our part of the region, Israel, we all know, is the hub. And you said that, uh, Alistair. It is the hub and the heart around which U.S. Foreign, uh, foreign policy is being shaped. The hard right and uh, the orthodox are now the key swing power bloc. Were Netanyahu to depart, the political scene would... Uh, 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 would the Israeli policy change significantly, given the shifts uh, already entrenched in it? I don't think so, no, because actually one of the, if you like to call it achievement, it's not a very good achievement, but is that Netanyahu has managed to persuade everyone of political significance in Israel to follow his policy on Iran and Palestine. And uh, for the first time um, with the upcoming elections in Israel, um, we're going to see um, always that um, uh, Net Netanyahu was always actually being trying to outflank um, his opposition on the right. And this time, for the first time, he is going to be outflanked on the right himself mm -hmm. by his hard right and his orthodox uh, elements. So Israel has moved to the right. Mm -hmm. And there won't be any change, I think, in their basic positions at all. They are full of uh, sort of the success of uh, normalization where the Gulf have thrown themselves under the Israeli umbrella. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I don't think there'll be any change. But at the same time, as I say, Israel is facing a major crisis with the coronavirus, a major economic crisis. More than a million Israelis are unemployed uh, and its population is only six million. Um, it has social pro mm. problems. It doesn't have a budget. The Defense Department, therefore, don't have allocated money for a new war at the stage. Uh, and it doesn't have a government. Mm -hmm. I don't think there are really the, the right moments. I think that I'm sure the security uh, officials in Israel will be saying to any prime minister, whoever the new prime minister will be, look, you know, I don't right. think we really want to evacuate half of Israel. Mm -hmm. We know that this time we're going to be fighting inside Israel and not outside of Israel. I don't think this is the moment to do that in these sort of crises. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. I Iran says definitively that it will not accept any new conditions to a G JCPOA relaunch. Israel says definitively it will never accept the JCPOA as it stands. Does Team Biden believe that a limited strike on Iran's nuclear facilities is realistic without triggering a wider war? And is Team A then prepared to contemplate a wider war on Israel's behalf, Alistair? I think this is where, and um, uh, earlier in another time, we spoke about Qasem Soleimani and the sure. changes that have taken place. 
I mean, this is this this is the strategic surprise that Iran has achieved. While everyone was been talking about the nuclear weapons and the JCPOA, they have quietly devised a completely new deterrence around the region, from Gaza to Lebanon to Syria to Iraq to Yemen, of smart missiles. And these are very important, and particularly the ones that have been fired most recently, because they suggest they can reach any part of Israel, and Israel does not have the defenses against them. The former head of the missile defense program said, we have nothing to counter this um, mm -hmm. onslaught. Swarm drones, swarm cruise missiles, uh, they're very, it's a new war that has been defined. So on the one hand, you have a split screen circumstances. Everyone in Europe talking about the nuclear program. And then the reality on the ground, which Israel does recognize, is that they face the prospect of utter destruction if there was a real war on the ground. I'm sure they're going to have a quiet discussion with the Biden administration if it comes into office mm -hmm. and say, look, we have to rethink this whole thing. There's no point going back to a JCPOA when the nuclear weapons are irrelevant. They're mm -hmm. not relevant. Mm -hmm. There aren't any nuclear weapons except those in Israel. And they're not relevant anymore. Right. Uh, allow us, Alistair, to stop for a short break. And then afterwards, we have lots of other questions. But after the break, and then we قصير ونعود لا تذهب بعيدا. أهلا بكم من جديد أليستر كروك، former diplomat، founder and director of Conflicts Forum. Welcome back to the show, Alistair. Well, um, on Palestine, the recent Palestinian resistance factions joint maneuver in Gaza does send a strong message in light of recent brazen declarations by most Arab regimes, not peoples, of normalization of ties with Israel and incessantly arduous efforts to dissolve and terminate the UNRWA, according to French newspaper Le Monde. What climate trains over the Palestinian landscape today, Alistair? Uh, I have to say that it's a very bleak climate. I think uh, here we have the normalization taking place, Arab states happy to join in, probably Saudi Arabia, either on the death of the king or later, will somehow join it. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is a sign of strength, as I indicated earlier. I think, in a way, it's a sign of an expiring, if you like, um, Gulf civilization or Gulf um, project. Um, but nonetheless, um, for the Palestinians, the, it's bleak. Um, not only has America backed away from UNRWA, but now the Gulf states say they're not going to fund it anymore. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's effectively going to end the right of return for Palestine. Mm -hmm. And then the leadership, the leadership in Ramallah is talking about going back to security coordination with Israel and is talking about opening negotiations and welcoming Biden to sort of super, uh, supervise those, uh, albeit with others involved in the room too. I mean, it's uh, it's a surrender statement, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are they going to get from it? Um, they're going to get a massive infrastructure laid down across the West Bank of new roads, new highways, dividing um, the Palestinians into Bantustans. Mm -hmm. They may get some uh, notion of a, a sort of symbolic statehood, but it will be empty. It will be of no meaning whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I very much regret that the prospects for Palestinians are, are very poor. And the people responsible for that is the leadership very much in the UAE, who've led this process um, uh, towards, um, if you like, abandoning the Palestinians. Um, but that is the, the reality. And they will have to wait for a new era or new events in the region. Um, before it's going to, anything is going to change, I think.
Right. Entrenching uh, Israel as a greater civilizational biblical project entails the ending of resistance, not just from Iran, but across the region. Does this mean that Team A would commit to undermining Turkey, especially as Turkey recently has emerged as a rival and antagonist to Israel's Gulf proxies? Um, yes, although Turkey, I mean, Erdogan is the master of playing everyone off against each other. Mm -hmm. And of course, he's open channels to Israel at this time um, with sanctions pending. He reopened Turkey. the embassy, the Israeli embassy. In Turkey. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, but leaving Turkey aside because it's rather a special case being a member of NATO and because uh, because of something quite different, which is that Erdogan offers America the prospect of a sort of Turkic nationalism that could spread across the Caucasus right up to the borders of China and Russia. And that's very attractive, if you like, for the ideas of undermining both Russia and China. But in the rest of the region, yes, I mean, look um, at what is happening. Lebanon is being broken broken completely financially, left uh, in, 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 in economic terms and financial terms, in absolute chaos. Um, so is Iraq, where their money is held hostage in New York banks. All their oil revenues are held in New York banks, and they're not allowed to use it, and they're not allowed even to get loans, and they cannot pay their civil servants, they cannot people. I mean, this is the recipe the Americans are, are pursuing that can end, may end in, in sort of civil conflict in Iraq. Mm -hmm. I, I they are trying to, what, what? Uh, to, to, you know, Lebanonizing the situation in Iraq. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. To weaken it and also to try and construct if you like, um, sectors of population that are antagonistic to Iran, to Hezbollah, to the resistance access to Syria. Mm -hmm. They give money in the new bill for Syria, for a wall to be built against Syria, for Lebanon's wall to be built against mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Iraq, mm -hmm. Syria. Um, and they will use the Kurds against um, the government and they plan and they think again of the old Ben-Gurion type of scenario where they can divide Iraq into a Kurdish, Sunni and Shi right. um, little statelet, but mm -hmm. parlous mm -hmm. and at odds with each other and therefore of no threat to Israel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, uh, Saudi Arabia's finances are worse than dire. The war in Yemen is a complete disaster and MBS's relations with Washington set to be extremely wintry, according to observers. Will Team A rescue MBS and the kingdom? Is a rescue even possible uh, when set against the kingdom's fiscal crisis? Well, I think in one sense, I mean, first of all, no one knows mm -hmm. because, I mean, Saudi Arabia, the kingdom is a black box and none of us really know what's going on because no news is allowed out, everything is repressed, everything is held. And should King uh, Salman, when King uh, uh, Salman actually dies, what happens then? Uh, we don't know. Is the kingdom imploding? Yes, it is incrementally imploding, partly from the pressures of the war in Yemen, where uh, the Houthis uh, and Sa'allah are making great progress in parts of it, right up to the border. Saudi forces are, are, are withdrawing. The economy, as you say, is in dire strait. Coronavirus is rampant. Um, yes, an oil price is down. The, the, it's almost impossible to imagine the budget or the finances of right. Saudi Arabia being recovered. But, but, but recovered. Alistair, are there but any prospects I, of an end I of want, the aggression against Yemen in 2021? Uh, I think I was just going to say that. I don't think so, because I think ultimately, um, you ask me, yes, Biden has spoken against um, uh, <clears throat> Saudi Arabia and, and um, uh, bin Salman directly because of the killing of uh, Hajoji and for other, uh, for repression. But at the same time, again, is Israel 
is the node around which American policy rotates completely. And as long as Israel sees benefit in a Saudi Arabia, and undoubtedly they do, even if it's, a, if you like, a, a, a declining asset, um, nonetheless, as for as long as Israel sees benefit in Saudi Arabia, I don't believe that the Biden team will really move against it. There will be rhetorical things and minor things, but will they actually go to the extent of imploding it and replacing um, uh, the crown prince with Naif, Prince Naif or someone else like that? I think as, as long as Israel is a content with the situation that exists at the moment, and why shouldn't they be content with it? Uh, then I don't see that there will be um, this tough action against Saudi Arabia right. that will go beyond um, sort of language and mm -hmm. speaking. I don't think we'll see human rights or anything. Right. Allow me, Alistair, to ask you my last question still in the region. In Lebanon, well, new documents show how the British government secretly created uh, between parentheses, regime change protests in Lebanon. How did you read this and how do you estimate the deteriorating situation in Lebanon? What is the way out? You have to, in a sense, understand that um, the UK sees its main card in its relationship, in its rivalry with France, Germany, the European Union, is the sort of close security nexus um, between the American deep state and the British deep state. And therefore, they will do a lot to please the United States to win their sort of um, their favors. And I see it entirely as uh, Britain at a period of weaknesses, leaving the European Union mm -hmm. on its own, an island on its own, wanting to do everything to actually ingratiate themselves um, with the deep state, which and therefore it has been uh, used against um, Trump, used mm -hmm. against his policies and furtherance of the deep state policies against Russia. We've seen all that with Navalny, with mm -hmm. all of these stories of Novacek poisoning and in Syria, because actually the new secretary of state nominated by Biden has always been in favor of further Blinken. action against Syria. Yeah, Blinken has mm -hmm. always been, in fact, his one disagreement with Biden was he wanted to see um, Assad removed. Um, uh, and during the Obama period, he was right. always advocating for tougher mm -hmm. action in Syria. And so I think they just serve this what they they want to be ahead of the curve, if sure. you like, sure. in, in getting to American policy and showing what a good friend they are to the deep state. Right. Just as we're seeing Germany competing and doing the same thing. Merkel and others and the mm -hmm. defense minister mm -hmm. saying right. they want to be the friends of America. It's very clear. I have lots and lots of other questions, Alistair, but I'm afraid time has run short. Alistair Crook, former diplomat, founder and director of Conflicts Forum. Many thanks indeed for sharing your observations and highly appreciated perspective, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Always Thank bless you. you and be safe. والشكر لكم مشاهدينا الكرام على طيب المتابعة للتفاعل أكثر تابعونا على صفحات السوشيال ميديا وحتى نلتقي من كل فريق عمل من الداخل من كل الميادين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله